Hi, and welcome back to Better You. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be a truly good leader? Well, today I have a guest with me, Dr. Felicia Harris, that's going to explain just that to us. She's going to give us some of the tools so that you will know what you need in order to be a successful leader in the workplace today. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Harris. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad you're here because so many people want to know, how can I be a good and successful leader in the workplace? So can you give us some of the tools that they need? Well, when I thought about you know, the topic of leadership, a couple of things kind of came to mind mm -hmm. um, in terms of preparation. Um, one of the first things that I think people need to think about is uh, themselves and what their brand is. I always uh -huh. say, what's your brand? Who are you? Uh -huh. So one of the very first things you'll need to, d to know is what are those traits that you have that would make you a good leader? Are uh -huh. you a good listener? Uh -huh. How you uh, process information? What kinds of communication skills do you have? Uh -huh. um, your your uh, unique abilities in that work setting. That would be one of the first things that I would um, have people consider. One of the other things, and I do um, um, on campus a lot of work with students in terms of looking at what their style uh -huh. in terms of leadership is. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that people can do that. There are assessments out there, mm. there are you know, online tools, uh -huh. but to use some of those tools to figure out what kind of leader are you. Are you a influential, persuasive person, which would you know, relate to being a leader of that capacity? Are you someone who likes to be strategic and uh -huh. very visionary? Are you someone who's a numbers person mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, again, will have a, a great impact on what kind of leadership or leader you are? Are. So looking at what your style, how you uh, use that style with other people uh -huh. and others in the organization um, will have a lot to do with how successful you will be as a leader. And I think one of the other things I thought about with this topic is how do you navigate the organization? Ah. Uh, it's very important to understand what the actual organization has in terms of its culture even mm -hmm. before you decide that you want to be a leader in it. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things to think about is who in that organization can you really sit down and talk to and get the truth about uh -huh. what drives that organization, who are the key uh, players, and it might not necessarily always be a titled person. It ah. could be that special person in a particular department who really has a critical function in the organization. Uh -huh who has access to the flow of information. Uh -huh. uh, some of those people oftentimes are your secondary individuals, again, an administrative assistant who That's works true. in the office of the CEO or the president. Mm -hmm. They are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful assets to have uh -huh. because they have access to a lot of information um, and they can answer questions that maybe other people in other places may not be uh -huh. able to. Uh -huh. So what are some things people should do to prepare themselves for a leadership role if that's what they're looking to do at their workplace? One of the first things would be to look at the organizational chart mm -hmm. um, to see if there are in fact opportunities for them to move up and what those opportunities are. If you're in a small organization, there might not be very many right. layers. So if you're, you know, interested in having a leadership position, it might mean you may have to look at similar organizations where there's um, uh, quite a few more layers. Um, I would also say, you know, think about um, if you have a mentor or a sponsor, mm -hmm. um, I think those roles are critical in one, having another person really tell you and share with you if you're ready for a leadership position. Um, huh. And selecting a mentor or sponsor, some people use those words kind of interchangeably, uh -huh. but a mentor really would be someone who's going to, again, tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And they would also give you the opportunity to look at in the organizations mm -hmm. you're interested in and see where there may be a fit with mm -hmm. your abilities mm -hmm. and your desires to be a mm -hmm. leader. What, if a person came to you and asked you, what classes do I need to take in order to become a good leader, what type of classes would you suggest to them? I understand that you are a professor at one of our colleges here. 
What classes would you tell that person to take? One of the first classes I would say would be a, a, a communication skills course uh -huh. that kind of combines listening skills as well as how you um, use your words and how important words are in terms of building relationships. Uh -huh. um, that would be one of the first courses because that, that that's a skill that you can transfer right. in lots and lots and lots of different organizations but if you're not skillful in communicating it can put a barrier for you even moving up in your own organization uh -huh. so a communications course um, a course in some type of management leadership um, there are elective courses that students can take mm -hmm. and then if they desire to be more focused in the business area then there's some other leveled courses they can take mm -hmm. that will give them uh, an idea of management management mm -hmm. practices what that looks like in different uh, organizational structures whether it's technology healthcare, mm -hmm. education corporate Fortune 500, uh -huh. um, but those would be the two, particularly the communication. What I found mm -hmm. on campus is students, um, you know, do a great job oftentimes in the classroom, Right. but when I have them do things like what we're doing mm -hmm, now or mm -hmm. have them doing a presentation, they get nervous, mm -hmm. and what I say to them is, this is a skill that you're going to need not only if you go into the workforce, but if you go to graduate school, medical school, mm -hmm. law school, dental school, all of those places require you to really have mm -hmm. sound communication skills. Mm -hmm. You know, in today's workplace, you find more and more women working there. What are some advice that you can give us for women in the workplace that want to move up in leadership positions but don't know how or what to do? Uh, one of the things, and I'll reference a book that I brought today called Expect to Win by Carla Harris. And one of her chapters, she spends a lot of time talking about building your network, building uh -huh. relationships. And I think um, women in particular, we have not leveraged how we use our relationships right. like our male counterparts. They're not shy about picking up the phone and contacting a colleague, a peer, whether it's in the organization or outside of the organization if they have, if they need help. And we oftentimes shy away from using our networks in the same way uh -huh. and or building our networks. So I would say looking at ways in which you can build a network, what it means to have a network. I think people use that word so loosely mm -hmm. these days. Well, I'm going to a networking event or I'm going to network and I always ask, what, what, what does that, that mean? So what does that mean? And it doesn't simply mean <laughs> going to a chamber event and uh -huh. passing out 50 cards and getting 50 bus uh -huh. business cards. What it truly means is developing a base or a foundation for you to build um, a closer relationship with a colleague, peer, or again, someone you've met, uh -huh. but they may be an asset you know, in the future for uh -huh. a leadership position that you might um, want. I'll give you an example. For myself, uh, one of the first leadership positions I had in higher education was at Johnson C. Smith, which I absolutely love that campus. And I got that position because a couple of people that I knew who knew I had finished graduate school, they knew huh. I was interested in working in higher education. They knew I was interested in a specific area, working with students. And so when a position came available, this person who was in my network called uh, the vice president on campus and say, I have this, this you know great person for you. She calls me on campus, interview, and a couple of days later, I was working. So, you know, mm. the, the beauty of, of networking, if it's done correctly, can really um, help in terms of getting into leadership positions and then staying in those positions and being successful. Uh -huh. You had mentioned earlier that women tend to shy away picking up the phone and making a phone call. Mm -hmm. How, how do, should a woman handle being in a leadership role and not appearing to be pushy or I don't want to say the other word they sometimes call us Aggressive. when we, okay, Assertive. that's a better one. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking of something else not so nice, but we tend to right. be labeled that when we are trying to move up. How can we avoid from doing that? 
Um, one of the things I think women should think about is, um, you know, of course, there are stereotypes, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you're alluding mm -hmm. to. There's this stereotype about a particular disposition, you know, so if you are aggressive and assertive and, you know, pretty tactical and strategic, uh -huh. it tends to, you know, have this you know, uh, stereotype. And what I would say to that is for women to really focus on how they can be excellent at work, uh -huh. do their best despite, you know, the atmosphere where sometimes it might be, be perceived as that. Um, I think one, in our, one of the conversations we had, we talked about being able to take feedback. Mm -hmm. So if that's some feedback you've gotten either from staff that work with you or colleague or peer, then how do you use that feedback and use it as a way to uh, leverage and change some of the things mm -hmm. that other people might, might perceive, whether mm -hmm. it's a correct or incorrect. Mm -hmm. People have that perception, mm -hmm. so it's up to individual women to really figure out, take, have somebody you know, give them some feedback. Uh -huh. That's going to honestly give them some feedback. And if they're getting it from this trusted person, okay, now what do I need to do to make right. sure this perception that's not accurate of me, I portray a more accurate perception of me in the workplace. But that's a that's a tough one. It it continues. Mm -hmm. If you look at a lot of the data that's out on women in leadership and in you know, corporate organization that continues to be one of the barriers that both uh, women of color and uh, Caucasian women still face mm -hmm. if they, as they move up the ladder, which requires you to have that aggressiveness and that assertiveness, uh -huh. but when we welcome it in our male counterparts, we oftentimes won't welcome it when, when we see it mm -hmm. in our female counterparts. If by chance that does happen to a woman in the workplace, mm -hmm. what can she do to maybe change how people see her so they won't they won't see her as being aggressive um, one uh, one thing that um, they could think about doing is aligning themselves on a project a very visible project in the organization with someone in the organization that may um, you know have more of a persuasive more of a um, easygoing nature in the uh -huh. organization. Um, I've seen that happen too, where uh, again, there may be a company-wide program. It could be something as simple as United Way, mm -hmm. but it's a very visible program in a lot of organizations, mm -hmm. which gives you a lot of kind of face time in front of the upper management, middle management, as well as the individual contributors. So finding a project where people can see you in a different light can change those perceptions and um, again, help you be able to move beyond that barrier. I want to ask you this and I'm just going to keep it really real with you. You know, we're two black females sitting here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we're in leadership positions, we've been given the title as the angry black woman. Why is that and how can we get away from that? Well, some of that um, I would say historically comes from the character Sapphire. You know, mm -hmm. character Sapphire origi originated in the 40s on Amos and Andy. Uh -huh. And we have seen it kind of passed down over the right. generations. So if we were to look at a Sapphire character now, it could be the mother on, you know, uh, every, everyone hates Chris. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can find where you still see those yes. visible images. Even though she's a stern, you know, forceful um, parent, her the perception is still that she's the sapphire character. Um, and in the workplace, it's interesting how even in that setting, totally different setting than a workplace setting, you still see people have that image uh -huh. of the sapphire, so they attach kind of this broad image of what African-American women act like, and you see it in a variety of um, different organizations, and it, it's not appropriate and it's not fair, but we know that it still exists. Mm -hmm. It does. So what do we need to do as black women in the workplace to avoid being given that label? Um, simple conversations. I know, um, you know, with some of the colleagues and peers I have, just sitting down having, you know, a lunch, particularly if you are interested, you know, in a leadership mm -hmm. position, figuring out ways where you can build a relationship with those colleagues and they can see you in a different light. Lunch is a great way to do mm -hmm. it, particularly if you can get them off, off site in a different location where people kind of let their guard down. They can see you in a, you know, a totally different light. Um, 
I would also say, again, looking at opportunities to be visible. Uh -huh. um, so you might end up taking a project that you might not necessarily would have thought about taking, but again, it gives you an opportunity to be in front of a different group of people who can see you in a different light than just what you do in your you know day-to-day -day box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happens, and this is an example of something that happened to me, I was on the Committee for Arts and Science Council where I work, and I was given this task to do, and I had one thing go wrong, and I feel like those people focused on that one thing that went wrong with the task I was given. How do I gain their trust? Well, they will say, well, let's tr let Cynthia do that again. Mm -hmm. How do you do that when something goes wrong on a project that you had no control over? Right. Um, I think making sure that people understand, you know, with any um, project that you're going to work, there are going to be some things, like you said, that, that, goes be, wrong. that go wrong. And we know that from anything that that's successful, you've had things that may not have gone right along the way, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't have gotten to this point had these things not happened. Um, so I would focus on the desired result was this. <laughs> and even though, you know, we had this gap or this challenge, we still met the goal that mm -hmm. we had at hand and you're still viable, you know, in terms of other projects that they may have. So I would tend to switch it around so that you see the positive. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I know a workshop that we do on campus with our student, the power of positive thinking is to take a situation like that and then you find all the positive. So if someone comes to you and says, okay, Cynthia, I know you, you had this pro, this uh, project and you know, this and that and the other didn't go great. Uh -huh. You focus, go right to the de desired result <laughs> every time. So after a while, they get used to hearing you talk uh -huh. about the positives, uh -huh. they will ev eventually forget about those things that you know were actually challenges. So, so far, what I've learned so far, we've talked about communication skills, relationships, mentoring, and positives. Are there any other things that people need to look at if they're thinking about being in a leadership role, how to prepare themselves um, for it. One other thing and, I, and that I have not mentioned is, and I think we had talked about is, you know, being inspirational and a visionary. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, particularly if you work within the domains of an organization, is making sure you understand how the vision that you may have is aligned with what the organization's vision is. And sometimes you'll see, you know, um, individuals who aspire to those leadership positions they may come up with this great you know visionary goals and objectives but it's totally out of line mm -hmm. alignment with what the organization really is focused on um, so I would say one of the first things again with those other things I've mentioned is to make sure you really understand the mission and the vision of the organization mm -hmm. uh, finding somebody again who may have been in the organization over some time that can really give you some history some experience and you know different time frames so that you can see how that vision either has changed or if it's the same vision you know how it's still relevant today mm -hmm. but um, if you want to be visionary as a leader within the domains of another organization uh -huh. it's really important to make sure you understand what that organization's vision means to you mm -hmm. and for you in that position. Mm -hmm. What are some other um, helpful advice you give to people that are thinking about moving into leadership roles? Um, make sure you have some balance with it. Um, I know some of the recent reports and some of the things we talk about in one of my women's studies class is how this new generation, this millennial generation, Ooh. is <laughs> not really um, accepting the trade-offs between being a leader and the personal parts of their lives. And so one of the things I always have individuals who are interested and who come to me and say, how did you do, and you have a husband, and I have children, how did you balance it? You have to decide mm -hmm. um, how much of an investment in this position you're gonna have if you do have the personal piece too. Uh -huh. um, 
you will need to make sure that, you know that you're clear on you know what are your priorities um, I, I think there's this cute little exercise that people can do and you do three or four circles and then the middle circle what is that top priority and you just mm -hmm. kind of prioritize things um, you know down the line and you've got to prioritize where work is going to fall into mm -hmm. your you know life and being able to have some balance and it's tough it's tough for women because uh -huh. when you think about if you're trying to have a family and you know married and all of that a lot of times it's happening at the same time that you're trying to move into leadership positions. Yes, so how Whereas, you juggle all those balls in men, the air. <laughs> usually if they do have families, they do have wives. Uh -huh. And you know, it, it, it's an easier fit. And uh -huh. Not that it's perfect and not that it's right, but the realities is, you know, are that um, women end up taking a lot of the responsibilities right. as it relates to childcare and you know, what happens in the home. So. I always say make sure you understand what the requirements of that position is. Is it 60 hours a week or is it 100 hours a week? <laughs> you know, be clear and, and if you do have a family, what impact will that have on your right. fam family and your relationships? Um, so if you do aspire if, and, and you know those things ahead of time, what kind of support systems mm -hmm. do you have? Do you have family in the area? I'm fortunate I have two sisters and my mother that live within five minutes so I can do things like this mm -hmm. because then I know my husband has support if he has a function at uh -huh. the same time. So we're very fortunate to have support. But finding out if you have the kind of support that you're going to need um, both personally and professionally. Do you have friends you know, who are in leadership positions that you can go talk to uh -huh. and again get you know the the true information about what it's really like. Uh -huh. I think we are in a little bubble and we see this leadership position and it's like you know that like, looks ooh, so great ah. and you need to talk to somebody who's actually been in the trenches uh -huh. and they can really tell you you know what it's like to lead other people, how do you manage your other people, you know the, your um, boss, supervisor, vice president, uh -huh. and all the lateral connections then you will have if you are in charge of a business unit, and particularly if it's an integral business unit to the operation of the organization, mm -hmm. you get tend to get pulled in lots and lots and lots of uh, directions. And I know with some of the leadership positions, one of which were, which I had at Johnson C. Smith, you know, I worked on weekends. But I was fortunate that oftentimes my kids were with me. Mm -hmm. Just because of that setting, mm -hmm. it allowed you know, for us to um, do that. Not a lot of organizations at the time that I had that leadership mm -hmm. position allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. But now more organizations are becoming more family friendly. Mm -hmm. So check into your benefits. What do you see, one last question, what do you see or how do you think um, millennials are going to lead the organizations? I know we don't know the answer yet, uh -huh. but from your being around those kids at the college, right. how do you think they're going to be leaders in the workplace? I think um, what we have seen traditionally in terms of a traditional work week, uh -huh. with the exception of hospitals and you know some of mm -hmm. the organizations that we know go on and on and on and they never shut down. Right. But I think we will see a difference in what the workplace looks like. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see more virtual uh, mm -hmm. operations. I'm on the fence about that because I think you miss that human contact that right. in a virtual community. Um, I saw an example where IBM had an office, one of their office buildings in Maryland completely was it was completely empty because all of the staff and um, supervisors and VPs worked virtually from home mm -hmm. and they would meet at a virtual cafe have staff meetings everybody would conduct their business but they would do it from home so mm -hmm. you know I think we're moving towards having more um, technical uh, usage in the mm -hmm. workplace. I mm -hmm. think a tra the traditional hours are going to change. I think mm -hmm. people will um, have the opportunity to have a different work week. So if it only takes you four hours to do what traditionally people have said they could do in eight hours or they uh -huh. needed eight hours to do, uh -huh. I think that's going to change. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see some organizations like a Google where you can come and go and 
They have bring your napping pad. rooms, and I mean, it, <laughs> those facilities are just mind-boggling when you think about, you know, a traditional work setting. Uh -huh. And you go in, you punch the clock, and do your work, and at five o'clock you go home, or you know, some of the other generations that just work until it's done. So you might uh -huh. work ten hours, fifteen hours, doesn't matter until it's done. I don't, I don't think they're going to want to work in the same capacity as we've seen uh -huh. you know in the last 20 years it's going to be different do you think it's because that they are so far advanced as far as technology is than we are that uh, they're going to see our jobs as oh i can do that in 10 minutes if it takes you all day um i think some of it has to even do with their communication capacity mm -hmm. because they spend a different amount of time than i know i do um, with technology and so if you're texting, emailing, you're doing those kinds of things and you're not really communicating, right. you can be in a work setting where you don't have to talk to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's different than if you're in a setting where you rely on people mm -hmm. to get things done. Mm -hmm. They may not have the same you know, reliance on other people to get things done because they get it done fast, uh -huh. doesn't take them as long and they may not need that communication support that traditionally has worked um, for a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and you may not know this, but do you feel that that's a good or bad thing, that we're going towards where we're not having meetings or we're not doing social things together in the workplace? We're all on the computers now. Do you think that's good or bad? Well, for this generation, particularly this generation coming out of college, I think it's a disservice because one of the things that Carla Harris was saying mm -hmm. in her book was that um, being able to build those relationships and in a job market as tight as what we are seeing right. now and they're projecting you know for the next three to five six years it's who you know well if who you know is you're texting and not talking to do you really know them mm -hmm. is what I ask my students do you mm -hmm. really what mm -hmm. can you tell me about that person mm -hmm. they can't tell me anything about that person so do you really have a relationship mm -hmm. so I think for that group initially coming out it's going to be a tougher work experience uh -huh. and job hunting experience just because they have not had the same types of communication building that some of the prior generations have had you know, Dr. Harris, you have given me so much information, and I want to keep going, but I can't. I know. Is there any way, if one of our viewers wanted to reach you or ask you a question about what we've, we've talked about, how could they contact you? Um, you can email me at Dr. Felicia Harris, all one word, no spaces, mm -hmm. at carolina.rr.com. Okay. And if you want to know any more information about what we just talked about, you can go to my website. It's www betteryoushow.com and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank I you for having so me. I learned so much. Thank you. <laughs>